The vehicle that we got in the shop today is a 2004 Chrysler PT Cruiser. The customer's complaint was that it was actually leaking coolant. Once I pressure tested, I actually found a couple different leaks. Uh, the main leak is the upper thermostat housing. That's so what I want to do. I want to show you step by step how to get to it, how to take it off, and how to replace it. And then, of course, the other leak was uh, some battery acid was starting to eat around the upper tank on the radiator. So I'll probably do a uh, video on that as well on how to remove the radiator. Let's go ahead and start working on the coolant drain and take the upper house. Now we got the vehicle up in there so that we can get to everything a whole lot easier. Now on the driver's side lower portion of the radiator is where you're going to find the actual drain. Uh, you've got two, a couple options. You can actually use the drain to drain the antifreeze out or go ahead and unclamp one of the radiator hoses, the lower one here, and pull it off. The reason why I'm giving you that option is, depending on the number of miles, uh, if this drain hasn't been opened up in a while, there's an O-ring inside, and when you go to twist it and pull it out, much like a screw, you'll come out so far until it stops, it has a tendency to actually split the O-ring, and you won't know until you put it back in, or you tighten it back up, put your antifreeze in, then you see a steady drip coming out. So depending on how you want to do it, you got a lot of miles, you may want to opt for doing the radiator hose removal and then let it drain. If you're going to do the drain on the radiator, what I do recommend doing is getting some WD-40 and then finding the bottom of the drain where it comes out. Stick your little spray nozzle in there. And as you spray, it'll come out around the portion of the drain that you're going to be turning. Now you just get your pair of pliers. And you're going to be turning counterclockwise and pulling out at the same time. And now that's backed out and freeze now draining out. So now we have the vehicle back on the ground. And freeze has been drained out. Go ahead and take the cap off. Now cap is actually where the upper thermostat housing is directly inside down the tube is actually where the thermostat is now any of y'all that have seen any of my previous videos have seen the one I've done on the PT Cruiser doing the spark plugs it's basically the same scenario as far as getting the upper intake off uh, of course we're not going to be doing spark plugs we're going to be doing the upper radiator hose and thermostat housing the reason why you gotta take the upper, or excuse me, the upper portion of the intake off is the thermostat housing actually has a radiator neck on it, a radiator hose neck up on here that it goes portion uh, up under a portion of the intake, and then the radiator hose clamps to it and runs out along the bottom and comes out. So we have got to get access to that clamp, which unfortunately is below this upper intake. Upper intake's fairly simple to take loose. We're not gonna remove it from the car. We're actually going to unbolt it from up front, and there's one bolt in the back, and then we're going to go ahead and pull it up and suspend it with a, uh, a bungee cord. Uh, that way it's up out of our way, but we've got access. We've got a total of five 8 millimeter bolts along the front, and we got one 13 on the back side of the throttle body right in front of the overflow bottle for the coolant. We'll go ahead and Take this apart as I'm speaking, you'll see it doesn't take much time at all. You can get a little tight back here. You can do it with a wrench. I'd recommend using a wrench. If not, you can use an air ratchet. So you just gotta take your time. Get that coolant bottle gets right in the way of the bolt. There's a bolt. Now we we'll go ahead and grab our eight millimeters. Now 
Now we get a bunch of cord. Put that on the one of the bolt holes. Lift up. Hook it on the hood. Latch. Now we've got access to the clamp as well as the radiator hose. And we can get down to the two 10 millimeter bolts that are going to be holding that thermostat housing on. I went ahead and removed the overflow hose. Got that out of the way. I've already unhooked the other side of the radiator hose going to the radiator. I didn't bother with this one being that I'm going to replace the housing and the hose. No need in getting to that clamp. Now, like I said, there's two 10 millimeter bolts that go directly down. One in front right here and one directly in the rear. Went ahead and backed them all the way out. Now when I lift up on the housing, the bolts are going to come out with it. And there you go. You can see two bolts sitting right here. One way to get them out without fighting. Now the bottom of the thermostat is sealed by the thermostat itself and the thermostat has a seal on it and there's your old thermostat. So we're going to be replacing both the thermostat as well as the housing and retightening and cleaning everything up along with the upper hose. It's not a real in-depth or a very difficult job to do. Uh, you just take a few steps. Uh, like I said, if you want to go ahead and do your spark plugs while you've got everything apart, that's probably not a bad idea. I've been asked in the past about these intake gaskets, if they need to be replaced. Uh, but what I've found is they usually hold up very well. Uh, just go ahead and reinstall the intake. You can actually feel them with your fingers and make sure they still feel like they stick down below the intake. If they do, then they should seal perfectly well. Uh, but if you just want to be 100% certain, you can go ahead and get you some new intake, lower intake gaskets that cover it up right here. That seal up against the intake. There's four of them total, four rubber seals. So uh, the uh, insulation is just opposite of removal. There's nothing real tedious about it. It's just when you go back down with the upper thermostat housing, just make sure you line everything up and get your bolts dropped down in there. You may have to use a pair of long needle nose pliers to get them down in the hole and then snug them up by hand. Uh, otherwise, simple repair as always. Uh, always thank you for watching my videos. Uh, please make sure you subscribe. So in case anything else comes up that you might be interested in, it'll notify you. Uh, with that, thank you very much. Stay tuned for more.